I'm gonna do something I don't usually do on this channel, and I'm gonna get into some personal anecdotes. So a few months ago, I quit a data science job, and this isn't the first time that I've done it either. In this video, I'm gonna talk about my reasons for quitting both times. I'm Richard, and this is Richard on Data. Now I'm gonna clarify that I did switch to another job, and today I am still working as a data scientist. But I have caught myself thinking, especially over the last couple years or so, that I don't know that that will necessarily be the case forever. So in this video, I am gonna talk about my reasons for quitting, but then we'll come back at the end and talk a little bit more about the super long-term prospects, for me anyway, of data science. Before I do that though, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and take just a fraction of a second to smash the like button, because that really does help my content reach a larger audience. Also, if you guys would be willing to go above and beyond to support, I will have links in the description of this video to my PayPal and Patreon accounts, as well as my crypto wallet addresses. All right, so the first reason I'm gonna talk about is the industries I was working in. So for almost seven years, I had f either freelance engagements, contracts, or full-time jobs in the healthcare or pharmaceutical industries. Now, at the time anyway, this made a lot of sense to me because those are just industries that I care about and that I'm the most interested in. I always figured if I can leverage a data skill set to improve hospital performance or patient outcomes, that's making a really positive mark on the universe and it's a really amazing thing. But there are some definite pros and cons that come with being in any industry, and I think that's true for any field, whether that's data science or not. And definitely one thing that kept coming up for me again and again was regulation. Now here in the US, we have what's called the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996, also known as HIPAA. This is basically a law that creates privacy standards around what's called patient health information, or PHI. The gist of it being, you cannot share sensitive, private, patient health information without that patient's explicit permission. Now, this law is quite well-intentioned, and I'm not here to discuss the merits either for or against it. In fact, I'm pretty sure any of us who have been in any kind of a uh, situation involving medical treatment, don't want our information being shared with a ton of other people either. It's also not unique to the US. There are similar regulations in Europe and in India and in many other places. But from the perspective of somebody trying to leverage real data in order to use it to try and solve some kind of problem, it does create all sorts of challenges. And in fact, I'd go so far as to say, this law influences every single part of data science activity when you work in the healthcare industry. From where your data is stored, to what APIs your data can interface with, to what programming languages or workflows you're allowed to use, to what solutions are permissible without too badly compromising patient privacy. The list just goes on and on. There's just been so many things throughout the years that I've wanted to do or to learn, and I haven't been able to directly because of privacy concerns and privacy regulation, that just after a certain point, I got the inclination just to try something else completely different. The next thing that's sort of contributed to me quitting my data science jobs is technologies. So any place where you might go to work professionally as a data scientist is going to have a well-defined technological stack, unless it's just in complete startup territory and it's just figuring this out. For example, your company may use a combination of, let's say, R with Shiny and Power BI. Or maybe your company has a fully cloud-based tech stack that relies uh, first then on Jupyter Notebooks with Python kernels. But my point is, for the most part, this tech stack is going to be pretty fixed and it's not going to change much. Thing is, you're going to get stuck doing one kind of thing for a little while. And that may be totally okay with you, but the overall problem with that is, in data science, there's such a massive breadth of skills that the market may expect you to know. And the problem is, if you allow yourself to get light on years of experience or just a little bit rusty on various important skills, you may be putting yourself at a long-term competitive disadvantage. 
And just for me, I've gone so heavy on R over the last several years that I just wanted to switch gears and take a break from it and switch to a more Python heavy environment. And that's what I've been doing. I've actually only used R a couple times in the last six months or so, and I'm starting to miss it. So what are you gonna do? Then the next reason I'm gonna talk about here is network expansion. This is a pretty nuanced conversation, and it's going to look slightly different for pretty much everybody. But something that you learn after a few years of experience is that professional networking is extremely important. Your network is going to be one of the best possible resources for learning new skills. Let's face it, there's always going to be somebody out there who knows something that you don't. And personally, more jobs than not, for me, have come from people whom I had just met or whom I already knew. So your network is also an incredible tool for discovering new opportunities. Now, leaving companies for me can be a little sad just because you're also leaving your coworkers. And over time, just for me, there have been certain coworkers that have become like close friends and family. You spend more time together and then just inevitably you build better, higher quality relationships. But understand that ultimately this is a trade-off because the longer that you stay in one place, the longer that you are missing out on opportunities to meet and work with an entirely different new set of people. And that's especially true if you're like me and you are coming from multiple, much smaller companies. So I really don't think that there's a one size fits all approach to this. As long as you understand the value of having a strong professional network, you're probably gonna do pretty well for yourself. Now let's switch gears here and talk about something that's similar in the sense that there's not really a one-size-fits-all approach to it, and that's solving different kinds of problems. And so you learn very early in data science that there's way more problems out there than you could possibly have the time if you had your whole life to try to solve. And frankly, that's because every company in the world out there has some kind of business problem that they haven't optimally solved yet. There's also companies more and more taking advantage of the amount of data that they have. So you put two and two together, that's why there are so many things for data scientists to do and why I don't think you'll ever run into a job security problem if you have a strong data science skill set. And I have to say, I have caught myself in a few different spells where I just felt like I was working on the same kind of problem over and over again. There were a few instances where that was highly specific machine learning rabbit holes. Sometimes it was R shiny or general dashboard development. It can be various different things. And now, if you work at a larger company, this is probably a little less likely to be an issue for you because you probably have a little bit more room to sort of move around and try different things. But for me, variety really is the spice of life. I'm a person who can get easily bored, and I have to be moving around a little bit, trying different things to keep myself entertained. And then there was a fifth reason for me, and it's the simplest one of all. I'm talking, of course, about money. It's a fact that the largest raises you'll ever get are when you switch jobs. Usually these raises are somewhere between 10 to 20%, and the average is estimated to be about 14.8%. And I have to be honest, I don't love that this is the case. I do sort of like the idea of loyalty, at least to some extent. But with inflation in the United States at a 40 year high right now, you simply have to be making large aggressive raises every year in order to keep up with it. And I really do suspect this is a pretty strong driving factor for the great resignation that we're seeing right now. Now, I would strongly suggest against trying to game this system because let's be honest, companies aren't stupid. And if you're getting a new job every single year, they know exactly what you're doing. But the other side of it though is, if you stay at one company for your entire life, you are going to leave the biggest possible raises you could ever get off the table. So I've given you five different reasons why I quit my data science jobs. However, I do still have love for the field of data science. It's rewarding, it's exciting, I maintain that it's a field that's not going anywhere in the future, and in fact, I get more and more convinced of that every single year. But I also have to be honest, am I going to be a data scientist forever? I don't know, I can't answer that question. 
working on different problems in different industries, meeting new people, learning new tech, and moving up the income ladder are all things that have helped to keep this field fresh and exciting for me. But I don't have a crystal ball. I don't necessarily know where all my passions are gonna be 10 years from now. And data science isn't the only thing that I like. I have a couple different videos where I talk about the long-term trajectory for data scientists. And I think often it comes down to getting a little bit closer to the business and closer to managing people rather than learning new tech. And that's probably where I see myself going after a certain point too. Ultimately, I don't really see data science as an end in and of itself, but rather as a means towards just innovating people's lives and business through new products and services. And just seeing that bigger picture is one of those things that's kept the field interesting to me for so long. That's why I think it's always important to know what opportunities are out there and to do research. Don't waste time working on things that you know aren't a good fit for you. Have some good quality information and use that to make the best possible decisions for you. So I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, take a moment to smash the like button and also leave me a comment down below. Have you quit a job in the last year? If so, how'd you feel about it? Did it feel really good? Did you regret it instantly? Let me know down below. Then I'll see you all in the not so distant future. Until then, Richard on data.